the threat for severe weather this evening and what that means for your weekend ahead. And the Minneapolis mayor set to deliver his budget proposal. The two factors contributing to a major shortfall and the areas he plans to prioritize. Plus, Joe Biden calling for a national mask mandate. Every governor should mandate mandatory mask wearing. Why President Trump says this could never work. Three big closures that might impact your weekend plans if you're driving around the Twin Cities Metro. I'll have the details on the detours. Then classroom claims taking over our social media pages from how to send your kids back safely to who's most at risk. Our Verify team is answering your questions. And DJs for just us. How a marathon performance this weekend is helping rebuild the city we call home. It's Friday, August 14th. Care 11 Sunrise starts now. Thanks for being with us. We're waking to some active weather moving close to the metro right now. Here's a live look over Bidemi Casca. Beautiful sunrise, but take a look at the radar here. Yeah, that line of storms up there to the north, and later today, things could turn severe. So Tracy's in the backyard, and Tracy's tracking all of that for us this morning. Tracy? Hey, good morning, guys. Yeah, with some strong storms and some torrential amounts of rain across northern Minnesota. Areas like Alexandria, Fergus Falls being hit with several inches of rain in just a few hours. Now, some of these showers could potentially reach us here in the metro this morning, but we're not expecting anything severe just yet. Once those clouds break apart, it's going to be another hot and steamy day. Now we are under an enhanced risk for severe later on, so I'll break down what that means for us here in a few minutes. And don't forget to download our CARE 11 app to stay updated on any severe weather happening in Minnesota. It's free to download in any app store. Yeah, it's a busy weekend in terms of weather and in terms of construction projects. You're looking here at the Lowry Hill Tunnel. If you have any plans in or out of downtown Minneapolis, there's a huge weekend closure along a stretch of 94. And that's not the only one. There's two other big weekend closures down near MSP International Airport. I'll have the details coming up. Well, we're following breaking news coming into the newsroom. Minneapolis police investigating a homicide in the Stevens Square neighborhood just south of Loring Park. It's happening on the 1700 block of 3rd Avenue South. And Kaya just got done speaking with Minneapolis police. And Kaya, what do we know so far? Gia, yes, we just heard from the police spokesperson. He says one man is dead. I'll show you right now the area that we're talking about and where investigators are focusing their attention. It's this high rise apartment building. They say that just before four o'clock this morning, so really not long ago, somebody called to report uh, some type of an altercation. And after that, Police received several more calls that they'd heard shots being fired. When officers got here, they say they found a man in grave condition that they tried to save his life, but then he was taken to the hospital where he was officially pronounced dead. Right now, no one is in custody. No one's been arrested. Uh, so there's a lot of figuring out to do. But of course, this is terrible for people who live here. Maybe had to hear that in the early morning and start their day off like this. And it comes, Gia, after so many other crimes just this week alone. Yeah, Kaya, we'll break down those in just a minute. But Kaya, uh, in Loring, south of Loring Park for us this morning, Kaya, thank you. So let's take a closer look at those crime numbers that uh, Kaya mentioned. So Wednesday, three people were stabbed in the Loring Park neighborhood. Violent crime there is up 49% from this time last year. In fact, this is the most violent uh, start to a year in Loring Park since at least 2016. In just a few hours, Mayor Jacob Fry will deliver his 2021 budget proposal. The city is facing a $155 million shortfall. A part of it is due to the civil unrest that followed the killing of George Floyd and because of COVID-19 and its effects on the economy. Fry said the city saved $58 million from several immediate measures, including hiring and wage freezes and cutting contracting work. I submit this proposal with humility and hopefulness. Our city and every individual who serves in this government has been humbled by what has transpired this year in Minneapolis. Yeah, and also happening today, City Council is considering changing the Minneapolis Code of Ordinances. It would amend how the Minneapolis Police Chief makes disciplinary decisions for officers. Well, big developments overnight in the fight against the coronavirus. Let's get you caught up on the three things you need to know. The Minnesota Department of Health reported 697 new coronavirus cases in the last day. That's out of nearly 15,000 tests statewide. A blunt admission this morning from CDC Director Robert Redfield. We were underprepared. And we need to owe it to our children and grandchildren that this nation is never underprepared again for a public health. 
The rare candid remarks coming as the U.S. confronts the deadliest day of the summer. Nearly 1500 people lost to COVID-19 Wednesday. Some encouraging news for the economy. The new jobs report shows first time jobless claims fell below 1 million for the first time since March. However, the continued jobless claims number, which counts people who have filed for unemployment benefits at least two weeks in a row, remains high at 15 and a half million. Now to our digital dive. Former VP Joe Biden is calling for a national mask mandate, which has the topic trending online once again. But this time, it's gotten even more political, if you can believe that. Biden says a mandate by each governor could save tens of thousands of lives in the coming months. His newly named running mate, Senator Kamala Harris, says that this is what real leadership looks like. And she even went after the president, tweeting, when other countries were following the science, Trump pushed miracle cures he saw on Fox News. President Trump later slamming Biden's call for the national mask mandate, saying that it's up to the governors of each state and the American people want to have certain freedoms. Right now, these are the states that require people to wear masks when they're out in public. Many governors ordered a mask mandate after they saw an uptick in cases in their states. Now, according to a new Monmouth University poll, more than half of Americans think the United States is not handling the COVID pandemic as well as other countries are. And a recent study also found the most effective way to reduce person to person spread of COVID-19 is, of course, Gia, by wearing masks. Yeah, but uh, once you bring up that word right now and when you put mandate in front of it, mandate, a lot of people yeah. just, you know, don't feel comfortable with it. But Alicia, uh, our sunrisers are going to be weighing in this morning and have been. Thanks. So let us know what you think about this. Text us 763-797-7215. We'll be sharing more of your comments coming up in about 10 minutes. Now time for your morning rush, a two year old in critical condition after being shot in Brooklyn Park. It happened early yesterday morning. Police tell us several witnesses inside an apartment complex gave conflicting information about what happened. Right now, police are looking for a young man who they believe ran from that scene. Charges have been filed against a man accused of tearing down the Christopher Columbus statue at the state capitol. Investigators believe Michael Forcia led a group that was protesting Columbus's treatment of Native Americans. Forcia's lawyer says the case could go one of two ways, a traditional trial or a restorative process. With a lot of people working from home these days, cybersecurity experts are seeing a big uptick in online scams because people are spending more time on their computer these days and they're also away from their bosses and managers. They're seeing scams like fake job offers and fake firings where they're reaching out, posing as people's companies and saying that you've been fired, you've been laid off or your contract has been terminated. They're also using the virus and people's fears and anxiety about the virus to try to trick them. Things like like you've tested positive for the virus. Click here for more information or click here for more information about a testing center near you. Now, experts say their best piece of advice is that if you see an email that you weren't expecting, stop and think about it before you click on anything. New this morning, voting numbers are in and they're way up in Minneapolis. City election officials say more than 130,000 people voted in Tuesday's primary. That's the biggest turnout in 50 years. 65% of all votes in the city were cast early. That marks the first time ever that an election in Minneapolis had more people voting early than on election day. And that is your Friday morning rush. Tracy, let's get to you with our one thing weather today. Well, we are in for another hot and humid day, tracking the chance for some evening severe weather. You know, look at the roads of quiet out there right now, which is uh, good news for your Friday morning commute. A live look 494 eastbound at Pilot Knob Road. This is one of the spots where there's a big week enclosure. I'll have the details coming up. Yeah, a few week enclosures, so it'll be busy on the roads. Um, Alicia's going to have that coming up. Well, if you feel burnt out from working from home, you're not alone. Just how hard this new normal is affecting our mental health. And she's made a name for herself on the video app. TikTok sharing important information with kids. We have a candid conversation with Minnesota's TikTok doc about navigating the pandemic and giving back to businesses of color. How some local DJs are supporting them after unrest and what you can do to help.